That is a, a big, big uh, statement there, consi considering, Anthony, that it took years of negotiations, and the latest being 18 days, multiple deadlines uh, coming and going. But it all boils down to what now? Well, it boils down to, I mean, there, there are a number of steps that have to be taken uh, to implement the deal. And in fact, the implementation of the deal is going to stretch over months and indeed years. And at any one of those points, uh, the uh, op opponents of the deal, and there are considerable opponents in both Iran and, uh, and, and outside of Iran, uh, in the region, in the Middle East uh, and in the US, um, can throw a spanner in the works. So. Um, there's not, don't take anything away from the agreement. It's a significant achievement. Uh, uh, it's a considerable achievement, but uh, I think implementation is going to be uh, very, very difficult given the complexities involved. Well, I mean, the, the complexities is really in the language, and that is what we don't necessarily know all the details to. But I think one of the most critical parts is uh, basically the IAEA uh, being able to monitor very closely. Uh, will the reality suggest that they're going to be doing it effectively, though? Well, and, we'll, and the proof will be really um, when that when that process starts. Um, you know, Iran has made some significant concessions in terms of monitoring in this agreement, but uh, it'll really be tested when you have inspectors on the ground, when particularly they seek access to uh, sensitive military sites, which has been, which was a sticking point in the uh, negotiations. And we'll see whether uh, the Iranian authorities, including, you know, the, the kind of local authorities are at those military sites, whether they'll be prepared to actually give that access. So that's why I'm saying it's, it was, these things are very, these things were very tricky to negotiate, but, you you know, there are any number of, uh, of players or forces on the ground who, who might block their implementation. And that then causes problems for other parts of the agreement in terms of you know, sanctions relief for, for Iran, all those reciprocal things that, that the agreement promises Iran if it implements the deal. Well, the, the neighborhood has changed so much in the decade or so uh, long of sanctions against Iran. I mean, Iraq no longer... A a threat in the sense of the word that it was uh, Hussein there uh, as, a, uh, as a rival. And then, of course, you have mm -hmm. Yemen and Egypt and Syria and all the rest, uh, other uh, tensions rising up. Why did the world want to do a deal with Iran now? Because this has been a long-term concern of, of uh, the international community, uh, you know, stretching back certainly in the last decade, but even longer than that, really. Um, and it was really about seizing the opportunity at a time when the region is already uh, uh, going through a period of, of deep chaos. And what we didn't need um, was uh, to deepen that chaos, uh, either because Iran, um, you know, sprinted towards developing a nuclear weapon, or because I, or or, or as a result of steps by Iran's neighbours to prevent it from doing that. So it was certainly the right thing to do in the context of regional chaos. The question is now, uh, as, as that chaos continues around Iran and around the region, whether you can implement, uh, implement the deal. Well, implementation also means there needs to be a, a modicum of trust between everyone, um, but we heard from the uh, ground force leader of uh, the Iranian forces, uh, the, the top brigadier general, saying, don't consider this a rapprochement with the U.S. They're still an enemy. No, and that's right. But also, I mean, I, that, that echoes what, what President Obama himself has said. He, he said that, that you know, this, this agreement deals with um, one of the um, major concerns that the United States and, and, and many of Iran's neighbours and many in the West have about Iran. But it doesn't deal with all the concerns uh, that, that uh, we have about Iran, about Iran's support for terrorism and, and other acts that Iran has taken in the region to destabilise the region. So it's certainly not going to solve all those problems. Having said that, um, it is a place to start. Now, the question is whether, whether Iran and whether the more pragmatic elements in Iran and, and whether the US and some of uh, Iran's neighbours can use this agreement as a springboard to deal with some of these other issues. Okay. I mean, you say that it's going to take years of implementation. It's probably going to be tougher than negotiations itself. What impact is that going to have on business mm -hmm. interests eyeing up Iran, opening up its oil markets, number one, and really a frontier market for so many? Look, 
there's no question that I think there is a lot of business interest in Iran, both in the energy sector but also more broadly. Iran is a massive market. But given the impact that sanctions have had, given the kind of uh, the, the uncertain environment that both sanctions uh, and uh, some elements of the Iranian system create around doing business in Iran, I think you know, you'll see this surge of interest, but when it actually gets to you know, making deals, to, to getting to the detail of, of, of doing business in Iran, I think things will slow down a bit. And already people are saying that in terms of economic benefits, just in terms of implementing the deal, you're not likely to see some of those economic benefits to start, start flowing to Iran until the first half of next year. So, you know, there will be a lot of enthusiasm both inside and outside of Iran for, for what this means for business with Iran, but I think that that enthusiasm is going to be tempered by, by some of the realities and difficulties of doing, doing business in these circumstances.